welcome to Access TV. My name is Jack Duxbury, he's the Maltese Falcon. And our special guest today is... Roger Ravindere from Apogee Electronics. Roger, absolute pleasure, sir. Very Thanks glad to be so here. Thanks so much for coming in. This is going to be, just to warn you, we're going to be chatting. Right. We're talking about primarily audio interfaces today, right? Absolutely, yeah. So we're not going to do a lot of sound things, so just warning, well, I'd like to warn the viewer now. Okay. We're going to chat. Yeah. But I'm really interested because I'm a long-time Apogee user. Okay. I've even shipped it off of my dad. You don't know this, but I bought my dad an Apogee uh, Duet 2. Okay. And first things first is what, what's the latest product from Apogee that we're going to talk about today? Right. So today is the newest version of Duet. Call it Duet 3. Come on. Uh, yeah. Um, we've only done a few versions. The first... You know, it was first introduced in 2007, the Firewire version, yeah. then two versions that were very simple, uh, very close. And so this is really quite a milestone that we've come out finally with a new update in the last uh, month. So it's exciting. It is exciting. Yeah. He's still rocking his duet too. Oh, good. At the moment. I'd just like to include my dad in there a lot because he's good. the ultimate consumer. Yeah. He's a very, very grumpy old man. That's a good point. He's a duet two guy. Right. What would he get from the duet three? So uh, we have updated some aspects of it. Yeah. You know, to start, we did want to kind of keep faithful to the idea. You know, the Duet user, they're someone who doesn't want to get too involved in the interface. They want something that's super simple to use. But I think with uh, people using uh, software, you know, plugins, plugins more, uh, maybe using hardware less. So we have added some hardware DSP with this new Duet. Ooh, yes. So, nice. Yeah, so you can do some processing on the way in. You know, I think the way people work has changed a bit. And now with, you know, several interfaces, the idea of now recording, you're printing your plug-in effects, that's become a more of an acceptable idea. And so uh, we now have that with Duet 3. So what's the full rundown? What's the full skinny on the product? How many ins and outs have we got going? And, right. Yeah. So it, it has uh, two analog inputs, you've got a mic input, instrument input, mm -hmm. um, and then a, a headphone output on the front, and uh, you do get some line outputs as well. So it's, it really is quite simple when it comes to the, the I.O. count. It looks even better than the last one. Yes. Because I, I loved, and my dad was very reassured because it looked very Apple-like next to his, right. but he got a new back, and that's what I always liked about, and we'll talk a bit more about the history of Apogee and uh, how we got there because I'd love to know more about it yeah I've only got what I googled when I was you know 20 working in the store and I knew that Apogee was kind of the best stuff that we sold right I think uh, now with this I'm interested where are the ins and outs right so uh, with uh, Duet you do get the well-known breakout cable uh, sometimes that well, was they might a... not know the, the punters might oh, okay. not know yeah. they might not know you're right so uh, indeed the product uh, Duet comes with a breakout cable you know, there were some who felt like, well, do you really need the breakout cable? I mean, that's the key to getting something, uh, you know, so, so elegant and slim yes. is, indeed, you've got to have a, a breakout cable. We've now made it so that, you know, on your desktop, you can actually probably get that, that breakout cable off the desktop. So they're a bit longer. Yeah, they're a bit longer now. Nice. So uh, it, what stays on your desktop is, you know, really clean. So you have this unit. This. Yep. And then the breakout cable goes in there, almost like the... I, I pitched it again, I can remember selling it to my dad a few years ago. <laughs> okay. And I was like, yeah, but dad, what's great is, you know, there's a bit of stress relief in the cable. And again, if you do travel with it, like, it, you can see the difference. Hopefully we'll get some sweeps. The Falcon will fly in for that. Right. And that multifunction knob, even right. he could understand it. Uh, right. But I can see we've got effects on here. Is that alluding to what's in the... DSP. Absolutely, yeah. Right. And I do want to say something about kind of the design because I don't know if anyone remembers before Duet came out, there were a lot of USB interfaces. First of all, the quality was not so hot, but also they were kind of intimidating looking. They had like lots of switches and knobs. Yes. And if you were a songwriter and you weren't really interested in all that, you just wanted to get your song down. And when Duet came along, I think it, it was it's such an inviting mm. interface. You're like, Oh, this is cool. I could, I could totally get that. And sure, there's some, you know, plenty of details in the software. But what you need when you're recording, you know, you want to set your input level, you want to set your speaker level, and your headphones. Mm -hmm. um, that is all right there, and that's all you need. 
And so I think when we came up with Duet, the new version, we really wanted to stay faithful to that whole idea. I will say about the knob, I think this is the knob that we always wanted. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that we, uh, we didn't quite achieve. The Falcon often talks about the knob he always wanted. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I know how that goes. You're right. I gotta be. Watch that word, don't I? So this is <laughs> this is the design that we always wanted. Yes. We wanted something that that just felt just really like you're really, really under does. control. Yeah. I like the move to this um, 3.5 mil jack actually. Yeah. So I that like way, that. if you've lost the adapter, you can still. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it makes you feel like less shame. <laughs> exactly. I always lose the adapter. So. You know, I will say it's it is kind of an interesting story because this whole idea, like, hey, we want to we want to stay faithful to the concept. It's like, yeah, that's pretty obvious. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, Apogee, we had to do go kind of around the block to get there, and so it's very different looking. Well, no, I'll tell you this. So what happened, um, and this incorporates the Symphony right. desktop, is for quite a while we're like, okay, we need to new, do a new version of Duet, and. Lots and lots of discussions, and then it was like, well, what we need to do? We need to, okay, no more breakout cable. You know, we've got the touchscreen on the Symphony I.O. We should use that. We should make it a completely new design, and you know, we'll do this, and we'll add all these plugins and all this technology, and then suddenly we're like, it's not a duet. You know, we, we've strayed away from the concept of the duet, but then we're like, this is a cool product, and that's what Symphony Desktop is. So Symphony Desktop Ooh. was sort of our first idea of what the new duet should be. And ah, it's a great product. I've never held one or seen one yeah. in the flesh. It's the first time. It's a great product, but it's not a duet. And it's no. not for, I think the duet customer would have been like, wow, this is a bit kind of over, this is not what I was after. And yeah. so then we sort of went back a little bit to the drawing board and say, okay, listen, people love the simplicity. They love the elegance. They love the design. Mm. And again, that idea, is, it invites you to use it. Yeah. Uh, and so that's, we kind of got back to this design. And uh, so that's sort of how we, we ended up at what is the obvious choice to remain faithful. It actually took us a while. And should we just, uh, as we're covering what's on yes. our magic table, I was genuinely excited that you brought this in. You probably think right. I'm a bit lame for no. thinking it. But uh, because I was thinking about upgrading my dad. Right. Um, just get a new one. Just get a new dad. Um, <laughs> damn it. I, what I liked about this, this is a dock. So if you are like freaked out by the breakout cable. Right. Or you just think, I'm not going to travel with it, but I love Apogee stuff, right? And it's going to stay in one place. This adds some things. I like the. this is a second headphone port as well. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. I did a little bit of research. You did. Because I love two headphone outputs, because I do yeah. a lot of engineering in the same room now sure. with the artists. Unfortunately, you know, a lot of people, don't, we don't have a separate vocal booth, so right, yeah. having that. And that just slides in. And it does, yeah, here. We'll uh, disconnect it from right. the computer. And um, it is a requirement that, you know that theme from 2001, A Space Odyssey? That it plays now. Yes, you have to, you have to play that, so. Plug it back in. I, I love that. Yeah, uh, and, and and indeed, if you were someone who sent us an email about the, the breakout cable, well, we've got an answer for they you. Thought of you, <laughs> and I exactly. love it. It adds something a bit more, and that's great. Now, for some reason, I it caught my eye. What's on your screen there? Right. Maybe because you hit one of these knobs. Should we talk about? Uh, that was always a thing with the Apogee was that it for. Uh, didn't have some of those buttons. Like I can remember turning on Phantom Power and things right. like that. I do in the software. Right. Yeah. And I was. It had. It was one of the first interfaces with a really good, clean control software. I can, oh, good. Thank you. Yeah. Which. Uh, so indeed, we have a, a kind of a brand new version of the control software. You know, in some ways, I see our control software. We spend a lot of time designing it, and we hope that people don't have it open that much. <laughs> uh, right. In the sense that yeah. uh, we imagine. You're getting your session started, you get everything configured, but I really hope that everyone kind of just finds what they need just right here. And yeah. you know how it is when you're in the heat of the session, you know, you don't want to be kind of mucking around with software. You're in your DAW. Uh, you just, you want to vibe with the artist. And yeah. so, uh, but indeed, yes, we've, um, 
kind of a, a brand new version of this software. And uh, you'll get to see. So there is the uh, what we call the Symphony ECS channel strip. Right. Tell and me so, all about this. And this right. can be, this runs on DSP in here, right? It runs on DSP that is in the box. Or yeah, that's, that's part of uh, Duet 3. And so we've got uh, a three band EQ. Yeah. And let me tell you how we came with this idea. Please. When you're recording, I think you want something that's fairly simple, right? You don't want a plugin that gives you tons of options. Because mm -hmm. you're recording, again, you just want to do some great EQ, make it sound great and you know, start doing takes. So uh, you know, we thought about with the EQ, uh, you know, frankly, some of the vintage EQs that are pretty simple, right? So it has a three band EQ um, with a, a shelving bottom, you know, a, sh a, a shelf on the bottom and the top, mm -hmm. and then you know, a somewhat semi-parametric uh, mid band EQ. So it really just kind of gets, you can get your sound in shape very quickly. Yeah. Um, we also have, you know, a high pass filter. In some ways, you know, the high pass filter might be the most important knob in any EQ. Yeah. Because you just kind of clean out. If you if you're cleaning so you out all the most, garbage yeah. when you're recording, then your mixes just sort of come together uh, great. So uh, I love a good I love a good high pass EQ. Yes. <laughs> well, this is the whole point, right? And you can commit to this. Absolutely. Just yes. like you're tracking through a bit of gear. Right. Which is until now. Um, I love that you've, you've done it because that seemed to be a new world. Uh, still, I, I forget, I've got an interface where I can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. But again, on that, I have to load multiple instantiations of an EQ, a compressor. I like that, right. that you've got it all in one, yeah. in one plugin. Absolutely, here. yeah. And, and again, the idea is um, just trying to get your sound in shape. It's just a bit along the road. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. exactly. I love this. Yeah. So with that in mind, you've got a compressor in there. So there's also a, a compressor. Um, and again, it's, it's fairly simple. But, you know, to me, uh, I, want my, I want to set my threshold here, um, ratio. And then, you know, doing the whole uh, uh, parallel compression thing. I think parallel compression is so useful. And so we made sure to have a, you know, have the knob yeah. so that you can do the parallel compression. Now, here's another, again, this was sort of one of my requests, is that this high-pass filter, I can actually assign to the side chain of the compressor, okay? And, you know, that seems kind of a little esoteric until you try compressing drums. And so if you roll off the bass from the side chain, it means that your kick drum is not going to pump that compression. Yeah. That's one of my, I mean, I think when I compress a drum set, I pretty much always roll off the bass from the side chain. And if you try it once, you're like, oh, okay, that's how you do it. That's how I get keep the kick drum from completely destroying, you know, pumping away. So having that, uh, being able to put the high pass on the side chain, I think is a really effective thing and to do. And some drive. The that's drive, cool. the drive knob, this was probably one of my biggest surprises because it's like, okay, well, some add some drive, whatever. Um, but so it's one knob, but there's a lot going on behind that one knob. So you can start with kind of some subtle saturation. And it's very subtle, but it's all about kind of increasing your apparent loudness, right? So uh, it's, it's kind of a different way than compression. And you can do something that's really subtle that it doesn't sound compressed or driven, but it's just louder. And, mm -hmm. you know, just at the peaks, you know, the peaks are just being controlled. But then you turn the knob and you can get a total fuzz. But as you turn the knob, we actually kind of work on the high end, sort of attenuate the high end so it never gets kind of harsh and kind of spitty. Nice. So that the drive is, you know, it stays kind of a nice warm drive. So um, I'll tell you, Clear Mountain's been using this in some of his mixes. And, you know, he's got any plug-in in the world. And he says that the drive knob has been super helpful for doing just that, just to kind of get that, you know, get that loudness, give it some extra life without some, without an obvious kind of drive sound to it. Mm -hmm. So that's been a, uh, it's really worked out well. And you can just get a great sound so quickly um, and you're ready to record. I love that. Is there any other, because uh, it says effects one and effects two. Right. So it's just for each channel. For each channel. Right. right. So okay. you get that, you get uh, like each that. of those on Is there on any each. reverbs in there? There is not. You know, um, it's an interesting subject because I know, for example, with Pro Tools and Logic, even when you're doing direct monitoring, you can actually get the reverb 
working in the DAW. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> and so, people are shocked. When he came to my studio, he was like, oh, you track it? Oh, yeah, we just put it on the channel. Right. And, and tracked so, it with low latency mode would be cool. Right. Even then, because it's time-based effects, it's not... Exactly. You know, basically, if you have a, l a little bit of latency when you're a singer, is huge. But a little bit of latency for a reverb, that's what we call pre-delay. Yes. <laughs> and so, and, but here's my, here's my thing. Tasteful. Because I've spent so much time thinking about workflow. So if you're listening to your reverb, and we may get a little wonky here, so you'll bear with me. Okay. But so if you've got your reverb in your low latency mixer, and you're recording, and it sounds great, what happens when you hit play? Disaster. Yeah, it's like suddenly and they it's lose dry faith in you. Yeah, that's why we do it in the DAW. Yeah, and so you do it in the DAW because you're right. It's and I'll tell you, if we get around to talking about desktop, we've taken this kind of idea even further. Where uh, with desktop, you've got hardware DSP and the plugin. We have the same plugin that runs on hardware DSP, but also runs natively in the DAW. The exact same plugin. Mm and a way to link them in a real clever way. But that's desktop. And again, that gets into a bit more um, interesting workflows. But again, well, let's go with there. Duet, let's go to desktop. You want, you let's wanna... go to desktop. Let's go to desktop, okay. I'm excited by this, because I don't, again, a popular product that I sold to a few of my mates back in the day, not sold, because I was on the, cause my friends knew I worked in a shop once, so okay. they always wanted a discount, basically. So I didn't sell them. <laughs> but uh, a lot of people, wanted the court they bought a quartet right yeah. and that was very popular with my friends absolutely yeah what but symphony always to me was your big posh rack unit that we absolutely. could never afford absolutely. so this is yes. exciting to me yes it is because because <laughs> here you know here's the big uh the first takeaway is this is in every way the same audio quality as symphony io mark ii the flagship so okay. if it says symphony on it it is our absolute you know best latest highest quality conversion because you know, at some point we'll talk about the history of the company, how it was all about the conversion stages where we all started 35 years yeah. ago. And so um, we're constantly updating that, that technology. Because you know, in some ways, chip technology, like electronics, it's just like the computer industry where the, the audio and converter chips I can get today are 10 times better than what was available you know, a few years ago. So the, the technology is constantly evolving. And you know, I'm not sure that every manufacturer updates their designs that often because it's expensive to kind of scrap your old design and have a brand new design. But it's especially with Symphony. What happens is all of our latest thinking and design goes into the Symphony mm. and then it trickles down to the products that come afterwards. So D Symphony is always our, uh, like I said, it's our flagship product. And so Symphony Desktop, it is completely the best flagship quality audio quality that we can uh, do at this time. Did you say this is a touchscreen? It is a touchscreen, absolutely. That's posh. Oh, I know. And what, what do I select? I know I haven't got it on, but tell me what, what do I, what would I do with the touchscreen on this? So, so you got would, two, you've got two in. Two in, and, and, and as you can see, kind of when it comes to audio format, it's, it's pretty similar to a duet. You've yeah. got two uh, mic instrument inputs, uh, you've got You've got two headphone outputs right, you know, right away. Which one on cool. the rear, one on the back. A line uh, output for your speakers. Yeah. A guitar input, which um, you know, it has that FET circuitry, so it's it's kind of emulating what you would get from a guitar input. It's that super high impedance guitar. Right. Input. Yeah. And then it does have ADAT I/O, so you can expand. Which is massive. Yeah. Things. Yeah. And quick word about the ADAT I/O. So we actually put there's actually sample rate conversion on the analog on the ADAT input. You're like, okay, so what it does is yeah. it makes, uh, I don't know if you've ever tried to connect two digital devices together. Have, yeah. You get the whole clocking yeah, thing. Yeah, which is the master, which, which is, is the, the slave. Master. So you don't have to think about that at all. In fact, you leave both the units on internal and our sample rate conversion just makes it all magically work. Because we've had so many, I would say, whenever you have a, a, a digital I.O. Oh, so this would just sense whatever box I've got mm -hmm. and sort it out for me. And sort it out, exactly. Killer. With with the absolute you know, best audio quality. You don't lose anything. Yeah, because that was a bit, I was like, well, which one's doing the conversion in my right. little pea brain? <laughs> right. Well, so remember, what you, with ADAT, it, all it's really doing is it's taking one digital signal and kind of converting it into another, which is not the analog to digital. That's the analog to digital where that all 
kind of all the quality happens. Whereas yeah. this is a very transparent operation and there's zero loss of quality. But the advantage is for most people who are a bit confused about digital clocking, it just takes care of Killer. it, makes that problem go away. And I've got so a touch kind of screen cool. here, yeah. which so, what gives me some of this functionality that in Duet is in the... Absolutely. So it is, um, you know, in the software on Duet, but you can actually access all our, our plugins from the touch screen on Symphony Desktop. Oh. Yeah. Including control, but all of the in internal. So that's everything that's happening on the internal DSP. Right. On yeah. here. And you said about the accompanying uh, plugin that you get with this. Right. So here's, here's where it gets uh, a little interesting. You know, you know how direct monitoring works. So when you've got direct monitoring, when you record, you're listening through the direct, the red, the so, low latency mixer or the direct mixer, right? When it's not going into the computer and out, it's just going. It's going right through, exactly. And so when you play back, obviously, let's say you recorded a vocal. When you play back, it's now coming back with the rest of the playback tracks. Um, and really the question is, and this is with so many interfaces, how do you do direct monitoring with plugins? How do you do that? So if you're printing the plugins, as we are in Duet, it's pretty easy, right? Mm -hmm. Just put the plugin on your plug in on your input and now when I'm recording I hear that plug in and I'm playing back I hear that plug in okay but what if I didn't want to commit yeah how do I do that well people would say you just copy the settings of that plug in but there's a very few manufacturers that have internal DSP that you can then mimic the plug in and uh, it becomes a bit funny right oh, boy I think you're going to I think you're going to be surprised do about you know this what I, mean? I do because I know how funny it is. And I know it's a little bit kind of like... Because people say that to me, yeah, they're like, why don't you just... Um, you, you'll just say, because the Falcon over there, okay. he's like, why do you do it in the DAW? And that's the prime reason. It's because when we're working and the singer hears it, it it's too late to wait for a minute to change sure. or to mimic the settings that we just... Oh, it's a bit long, the reverb, and then go back to the right. playback channel and mimic it. Right. They need to be working together. So you have just precisely told us the problem that we need to solve. Okay, so imagine this. I'm in my DAW. Yeah. I open up the Apogee uh, plugin in my DAW. Yeah. And I have to do one kind of special control. And that is I'm gonna, I'm gonna in the plugin say, I'm gonna link that to a hardware input. It's like there's a little drop down. Yeah. So I've got my vocal microphone. I'm coming in on input on analog one. Mm -hmm. I open up the plugin in my DAW and I put the drop down to analog one. And then I just start fiddling with the plugin. What the system does transparently and automatically, it opens up a second plugin in the direct path yeah. and it links the two plugins. That's what it needed. So that as you're adjusting this, it's automatically adjusting on the, on the direct path. And basically you, your singer sings and they hear your great processing and you yeah. hit playback and they hear the exact same processing. Now, and of course, it's non-destructive, right? Mm -hmm. This way, I can change I can change the settings if I yeah. want, and you know, as my mix builds, I can evolve and like we do. It seems like I'm making a mountain out. Some people, I think, have said that, or I've read online like we're making a mountain out of a molehill with this one. But it really, when you're working with singers who are, especially like professionally, who are very demanding sometimes. Yeah. It, it, it's just a process that you can't, maybe if you're on your own, it doesn't matter to you so sure. much. But like when you're working professionally, that really is a magic thing you've sorted Absolutely. out. And again, I just had this conversation with a lot of people, this exact yeah. same conversation, like, well, how do I actually get around to doing this? The second thing though is I haven't left the DAW. I no. haven't bounced over to the, to control, the software. control software. I've stayed in my DAW. So now the next step about this is I disconnect Symphony Desktop, and what happens? Yeah, you lose all that DSP. You don't. In other words, basically, yeah, because, the, it runs native. because the one that's in your DAW is running natively. So you've done a whole session. You know, you've got your vocal processing down. Then you record your bass, your guitar, your drums. Yeah. And at each time, what's left behind is the native running plugin with the processing. I so you it. unplug the desktop. You plug in your built-in when you're, you know, on the plane, yeah. and it sounds exactly the same. That's what Nothing I was moaning to you about earlier. 
<laughs> I was moaning to him about earlier. Well, there you go. So with Symphony Desktop, again, we've taken, we've had these conversations about workflow mm. and uh, how people are using plugins. And so we came up with a system that, frankly, you know, answered a lot of the questions. So we, our plugins can run on, on hardware DSP. And if you want to print with Symphony Desktop, go ahead. You can do the printing workflow. Um, but if you want to have this monitoring workflow where you've got, you know, it all happens sort of automatically without a whole lot of effort, we've got that as well. It's very unique, I think. Yes, and, that is, um, and that's sort of the message with Symphony Desktop is that we've kind of solved these workflow problems um, in a way that, to my knowledge, is unique. Yeah. I don't know if there's any other audio interface that does it. And I must say, uh, again, there are a lot of people I start this conversation with and they just look at me like, what are you talking about? Because they don't encounter that. Or maybe they're just no. doing software monitoring. Yeah, or you, so, could, you could chill. If you're, if you're not in a rush, you know, you could go, oh, look at the settings and mimic it. But a lot of the time we're in a, you can't imagine the rush you're in. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, and, and, and again, to me, to, to us, that wasn't the Duet customer. This night, you know, the Duet customer that whole thing might be you were a bridge too far. You're just sounding chap yeah. or chapess. Well, I wish it was all me. I mean, again, this is sort of, this is, this is the apogee thinking. No, that's just thinking. what I think. Anyway, because, okay. yeah. So, uh, Can I just ask, because yeah. I don't know anything about this. Oh, right. On the back, we've got USB host, USB-C. Right. How much can it run off plus power, this one? Or does it need it, some juice? It cannot. So it and the USB has... host is handy, like a MIDI. Well, I must say, at the moment, you can't. Right, okay. Um, that actually is for updating the unit. Oh, right, nice. So you can actually update the unit without a computer. Because um, it's a full-on... Uh, I'm sure we, we should turn it on and we'll get some sweeps of it so you can see yeah. what the screen looks. That would look awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah. And so these are... Again, we imagine two different customers. Both have hardware DSP. Again, Symphony Desktop has a few extra tricks to it that I've just described. Yeah, because this is still definitely backpackable. Yeah. And, um, it, yeah, again, if I was doing it with the two headphone outs off the, uh, built into it, that would appeal to me because I do a lot of engineering in the room. But then I like that, that you can get similar with the dock. Yeah, that's true. I like it. Good. Now, <laughs> and these are all available to buy from us. We're shot. That's what we're doing here. But one thing I wanted to ask you, I'm a mm. bit of a Bob Clear Mountain fanboy. Okay. boy. Sure, me too. So if you want to turn off now, turn off. Thank you very much. Thanks for oh, watching. Thanks for it... being here. But I'm just going to ask some very selfish questions. Right? Okay. Uh, Can I tell you? Yeah. When I first started at Apogee, yeah. like my first week, there was a kind of a company get together at Clear Mountain's house. <laughs> and I walked up to the door and he opened the door and I kind of, Kind of froze. He opened his own door. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and I kind of froze. And uh, one thing we do lots at Apogee is uh, we'll be over at his place, and he'll play us his latest cool mix. And still, after all this time, it is so cool to be in his studio. And he'll press play, and you're like, "Oh my gosh, this is why I got into this. This is why I'm into this whole field because it's so amazing to listen to what he does." But anyway, so. Oh, because I, I watched video in lockdown, actually, one of the first things that really kind of, I wasn't, looking back, I really appreciated it, was that he did a chat with Tony Berg. Yeah. Who's, I'm, I'm deep into almost every record this guy makes. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, I, I, lo I love him, but I just, instead of me waxing on, where could you, can you go to the Apogee channel? Where's best to learn about Apogee instead of me just... Because uh, I don't want to mess it up. I, I mess right. it up because I get overexcited. No. You've got your own YouTube channel, right? Absolutely, yeah. Uh -huh. And Bob does, a, and I love that, it's some really candid chats with some big, heavy-hitting guys. I mean, the yeah. Falcon spent most of his student loan on Mix with the Masters. Okay, yeah. Because <laughs> Mix with the Masters costs a lot. But I felt like on the Apogee channel, from what I saw, you've got a lot of good stuff on there. Right. So I'm sure we'll link that below. Go check that out. Yeah. What's his... <laughs> involvement in it. When did he come into Apogee? Right. So, again, I think it's, it's somewhat widely known, but his wife was the founder of Apogee. No. Yeah. So Apogee is a woman-run company, which is something in the audio industry. Yeah. So she founded the company 35 years ago, and she has led it ever since. 
Um, and uh, it really brought us to the point where we are now. Yeah, I feel bad for not knowing that. No, no well, I, I would say it's, it's, it's nothing we advertise. Because in my brain, I thought like Bob somehow was like maybe just didn't have much on. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going right. to get into it. I'm going to sell some gear. Right. But, but no, no it, must, it must be said that they met because he was an Apogee user. No. Words, yeah. So he... He was. He not, really loved that soft limit. Yeah, he absolutely did. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he was a he was one of the very early users of Apogee, and you know he was into digital, kind of before everyone else was. Because mm -hmm. I, I have the, had have had the conversation with him where he was really frustrated by analog tape. You know, these days we're all oh analog tape, I love the warmth, mm -hmm. and he said like he'd set up the band, he'd get all the mics going, and he like this sounds amazing, and then he. would Record on analog tape, and of course, in the biggest studios in the world, so tape machines, you know, calibrated to the nth degree. And he'd play it back, and he was always disappointed because, like, he'd say to the band's like, "Wow, if you could just hear how you sounded, you know, originally one, without yeah. the without the tape machine." And so he was very into digital, you know, very early on. But he also kind of understood the limitations of digital audio, and and that's what you know, Apogee was founded back in that time. Trying to solve that problem. Were you, was it clocking first or conversion, or is, are they well, the same thing? Because uh, I can remember the right. Big Ben was everywhere. Oh yeah, yeah. No, the very first thing, believe it or not, were filters, were custom filters for Sony, thirty for Sony digital tape machines. Those crazy expensive ones. Yeah, yeah. And so the, uh, you know, again, the Japanese are great at technology, but maybe they missed one small step. Um, in creating their early digital machines. And uh, so Betty and a few engineers kind of really looked at the problem. You really do love a high-pass filter. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it, it was all built up. It's all about the filters. <laughs> yeah. But so it turns out that the, the filtering of those Sony machines, there was something about, that was the real sticking point in the system. And so our very first product were custom filters that you would have to like ruin the warranty, like break the warranty of the machine and have them installed, um, but they be, just became universal. And, uh, and towards the end, Sony would install Apogee filters on their machines, uh -huh. just from the fact yeah. that, because everyone agreed. So that was the very first product. And then, sort of, that's one stage of conversion. And then we developed kind of standalone external converter, converters. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, when you're making a converter, sort of the clock is all part of it. And so that led to the clock technology and yeah. this idea you were the am I right in thinking that you had this idea of that you could push the converters you were one of the first people where it was all right to kind of go near zero right well so of soft limit so yeah so soft limit that indeed that was another idea where um, you know if you want that pure sound you want it but the 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 one advantage of tape of course analog tape you can yeah. push the tape and so soft limit is really based on that idea of being able to push a converter like you push tape. And interestingly for a digital company, soft limit is a totally analog process. So it, you know, in an A to D, right, you've got an analog section, right, yeah. a digital section. So soft limit is all analog. It's totally analog. It's not like a digital process. Is that still incorporated? In Absolutely, yeah. Um, and I think in the past, sometimes we've skipped it and... <laughs> We've learned not to right. skip <laughs> soft limit just because a lot of people love it and they count on it as being kind of part of the product. That was, again, wrapping it back around to my dad. Yes. So I, I was like, Dad, trying to get him, because into digital was like these were the products that had a little bit of source to them. They brought a sound to the way that you converted it, not just, I'm of that thinking as well. I don't actually, I can totally see why there's two camps. I, I want exactly what's going in. Right. But if, do you feel that, is that, like, does Apogee have a sound or, or, because that's my layman perspective is that it imparts somewhat of a sweet, it, in my mind, it sweetens things up. Right. You know, it, it's kind of an interesting idea because I feel like. Or am, am, was I no, convinced no. by no. the old marketing bump like 15 years ago? <laughs> right. So, you know, I feel like in, in the past, we've had the same designer for again 22 years the same analog designer oh that's great yeah so he in some ways he really is so much the apogee sound and you know he always says to me that you 
there is no such thing as the perfect circuit. And so you, at some point, designing conversion becomes an art form. Obviously, there's tons of technical mm. aspects to it. Once you've mastered those, you make artistic choices about, you know, how is your circuit going to sound? And he, I feel like he's getting kind of, he, he's been getting closer and closer to something of a, of a purity of sound, but it still has, he is making subjective choices. Mm. Because there is no objectively perfect. Like he did with those filters at the beginning. You're like, yeah, yeah. this could sound a bit better. Right. And so he's, he is always applying a, a subjective judgment to the circuit. And so to that effect, I feel like with some of our earlier products, the sound was quite pronounced. So that if you didn't want it, well, you had it. Yeah. So I think that that... That, that was a that, real thing back then. Absolutely, right. yeah. Whereas I feel like certainly the, the sound is less pronounced... You know, I always just have this, just my subjective emotion with our products mm. is this, just this wide band kind of incredibly clear windshield into my digital audio world. And it just, it feels like large and expansive. Mm. It's kind of the best way I can explain. And you could hear it on playback. I can remember the first time I played it from, a, from the old pup, so you could yeah. hear it on the playback. Yeah. Even with his ears, even his shot out ears. But I love that you can do this now. Yeah. And I love this. I, I was feel stupid now for asking where you're from, Santa Monica. If you've never been, go. If not, Google it, and then you can kind of get an idea because it seems like it's all wrapped up in the product. Yeah. And Bob, and now I get it. Well, I get, I get it all. Okay. Good. And I just want to. I just want to go around and eat snacks because it seems like he has like soirees. There seems to be like yeah. some of the videos they're introducing products, and there's just people like hanging out. Right. CLA just you know like falling over the. <laughs> mixing console absolutely <laughs> and and cla and bob are, are great friends and you know cla he he expresses his admiration for bob which is always sort of interesting you know he's got such an outgoing but you can see yeah Bob's... Chris. but bob is he's quiet but uh you know they have a, a great sort of dynamic together beautiful yeah and we can get all this stuff from anderson's and that's it. Thanks go. so much for being back there, guys, and sorting out the video. Thanks so much for coming, mate. If you like sure. what we're doing, consider subscribing. If you don't, we're both grown-ups. We can take it. You can write what you think in the comments section. There you are. And uh, stick around. We're, uh, this is all ad hoc. We're moving to a new studio, so you'll see that soon. And Lord knows what it'll look like, but uh, we'll give it a go. Thanks so much, mate. Cool. Pleasure. My pleasure. See you guys.